Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. If you like design and using 3D printing to solve real world problems and not just printing trinkets, this channel's for you. So what I've got on the bench this week is a gear. And this gear is just one part of a much larger project. We're gonna have to actually go up to my barn uh, to take a look at where this gear fits in. Okay, so we're up in the barn and this is a Kubota tractor and this is a Land Pride snowblower. I believe this is the SB1064, but I'll put the exact model number down in the description for you. And you can see where that gear fits in. Uh, it's right here on this motor that operates the, uh, the blower chute. Uh, this rotates around so that you can point the direction that you want uh, the snow to, to go. So, you know, if you want it to go out to that side or to the rear view or out this side, whatever direction you want to blow it. Generally, you want to blow it with the wind and not onto the surface you're trying to clear off. So when I bought this snowblower, it did not have uh, chute rotation. It was manual. There was a crank that you turn here. If I can find a clip, uh, I'll put it in. And the problem I had with that was, not that it's a pain to turn that crank manually, but it actually wouldn't stay in the direction I was pointing it. It would tend to move around um, as I was blowing snow, and it was just, it was a pain. Now, Land Pride sells both an electric and a hydraulic kit to rotate this guy, but they wanted $800 for it, for the electric one. I think the hydraulic one was even more money. And I'm not afraid of spending money if you need to, but I just, I figured I can fab this up. I'm pretty sure I can figure out how to do this. And that is exactly what I did. So switching sides here on the snowblower, there are three different parts that make this up. There is the gear that we already looked at on the bench briefly. There is this mounting plate, and then there is a gear motor. The gear motor is just an off the shelf part. Uh, the gear I designed and this plate I designed and the plate was actually believe it or not the harder of the two to design because I wanted to get the the gear motor on a vertical sense as high up as possible as close to this gear as possible so that we don't have the shaft on the motor acting like a lever arm and pushing this guy away so there's standoffs here on the motor and when we look at this design later you'll see what I mean but this motor actually sits about two-thirds of the way up into this plate uh, to get the bearing surface on the motor as close up to this larger gear that we're rotating as possible. And from a control perspective, there's a set of wires that runs up here to a box that is mounted on the ROPS bar or the rollover bar on the tractor. And let me get up in the seat. It's probably easier to show you how this works from there. Okay, so here we are in the seat and you can see that this box, it actually grips uh, right around that bar and there's a stainless steel bolt on either side that goes through there. Um, so this is completely removable. There's no holes drilled into this bar up here. It just clamps onto the bar itself. And then I've got a set of cable glands. And one wire is the power coming in. The other wire is the power going down to the gear motor. And this switch effectively reverses. It's either in the center position, it's not sending any power to the motor at all. Um, and depending on which way we press it, it reverses the voltage uh, that it sends to the motor. So if we push it up, turns that direction. And if we push it down, it turns that direction. Here's a better view of the switch that I used on this project. And it is a rubber coated rocker switch with a real easy action so that when you're wearing gloves out blowing snow, it's really easy to just sort of mash this guy um, and operate the blower. It's funny, the, uh, the kit that Land Pride sells for this, that's like 800 bucks, I believe has toggle switches on it. I don't know how the heck you're supposed to operate those toggle switches uh, with gloves on, um, but this is super easy to operate, very happy with it. I'll link all the parts I used for this down in the description below. Uh, the switch, uh, the stainless steel bolts for this, and the hardware that I used for this as well. And here's a better view of that box since the light's coming from this side. It's a bit hard to see it from the angle I was at before. And these are nylock nuts uh, that are pressed in on this side uh, so that when the bolts go through, um, you can have just a little bit of clamping force uh, on the bar, but they stay tight with those, uh, the nylon part of the nuts uh, and don't vibrate out when this guy is in use. And when it comes time for summer where I want to remove the snowblower and put my backhoe on, um, I just take this guy off, these two bolts, and the power wire uh, unplugs over here at the tractor, and this whole thing just goes with the blower, or I can also unplug it uh, right here. This is what's called a Dean's connector. It's a high amperage connector 
uh, that you can unplug just by pulling on it. And I did that so that if anything got snagged, uh, rather than catching on this and ripping something apart, um, from a safety perspective, it just pulls apart. So this was quite a fun project to design, and it's one of my longer projects, and it's not a great fit to show you the full details of how I did this on this channel, but I do have another channel where I do lots of general stuff. I've done tractor performance mods, I do motorcycle riding, and I have a three-part series on all of the details from start to finish of how I designed and built this. So I'm gonna link that channel below. Check that out. In fact, I'm publishing part three of the video for designing this on that channel uh, today, which includes full testing. You can see this guy blowing snow and turning and also me chasing down my drone uh, that blew away. So check that out. Uh, let's go take a look at the design for this and just see if there's anything that I missed and you can get a better idea of what the inside of this mounting plate uh, looks like. So let's go take a look at that now. Okay, so here's all the different design files for this and let's take a look at the mounting plate first. Uh, I mentioned about how the gear motor actually sits up inside this guy and if we look at the underside of this you can see what I'm talking about. And I'll put a picture of the gear motor here on the screen as well on the bottom left so you can see how this guy would sit up in here. But those standoffs that you can see on the gear motor go all the way up and push against these flat faces up here. So the bolts that hold this guy in place are coming in from the top with a set of fender washers and go down into those standoffs to bolt this guy in place. And this sits up about two thirds of the way in and completely locks in place with those cast aluminum fins um, as well. And that gets the, the bearing on the output shaft of the gear motor as close as possible to the same height as that larger gear uh, on the chute itself. And the total length of that shaft, um, you know, counting any height in the gear here is what we want to keep as short as possible. Um, and, you know, sinking that guy up into here and getting as close to this face as possible it is what allows us to do that. Um, the gear itself uh, was not terribly difficult to design. Um, I, I did find that Land Pride didn't seem to use any type of standard gear profile uh, for, for the gear. I think they just kind of drew the rough shape of a gear and then laser cut it in steel and just welded it onto the chute. And it works fine. Um, you know, I'm not complaining, uh, but I wasn't able to find any gear profile uh, that it actually aligned with. So I couldn't use any of the online tools for drawing a gear. I just ended up drawing this one um, here in SketchUp, uh, following the same rough measurements of the gear teeth on uh, the, the, the gear that Land Pride uses. Uh, this actually worked on the first try. I was amazed at how well this gear meshed um, with the one on the blower. The only changes that I had to make were uh, adjusting the overall height of the gear uh, to get the, the, the proper mesh vertically that I needed. And I went through two iterations to get a nice friction fit on the two flats of the shaft that come out of the gear motor. Uh, the, that shaft that you see on the gear motor uh, comes up through the center here, and then there's a washer that goes down and a nylock nut to hold it in place. I was initially a bit concerned that the, the rotation of that shaft under high torque might uh, flatten out or, 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 uh, or, or push these two flats uh, you know, round and slip, but I can stall the thing out and I don't see any wear on these two flats at all. I think as long as you have a nice tight fit, um, at least in PLA, this guy doesn't seem to be deforming at all. In fact, overall, I am really impressed at how well these parts have held up. I'm not seeing any wear on anything after one full season of use on this guy. So if we shift over to the control box, uh, you can see I modeled the actual steel ROPS bar uh, here in SketchUp so that I could get an idea of how I wanted this guy to fit on here. And we can go ahead and hide this and take a look. This is two pieces and I didn't actually, on this one here, I hadn't actually drawn the, I noticed the recess here for the, for the nuts. Looks like I did that on my final pieces here. But this does have the plate on the back uh, that covers access to the, the switch. And you can see the two holes down there for those cable glands to come up and the cutout here on the front for that rocker switch uh, to fit into. And it's a nice tight fit for that rocker switch. It just clicks into place. Uh, and that switch has a rubber seal on the back of it uh, as well. Uh, I was originally going to just put some caulk in this groove here um, when I put the cover on. I never went back and did it. 
Uh, I probably should check that to make sure that I'm not getting any water inside. But the way this is designed, I'm pretty sure any water that gets in is is uh, is just going to run down the sides and then run off this ledge at the bottom anyway. But I will check that. Um, you notice I have two separate pieces here for uh, both halves of this. Uh, the reason for that is I built supports into this, particularly for this one here. Uh, let me just hide this outer portion. This here is all support. Because it's hollow in the center, uh, if you let your slicer try and generate supports for something like that, it tends to just make a mess of it. I found it a lot easier to just make my own support uh, that would break away. So it's not actually touching these surfaces. All of these come quite close, but don't touch them. And same thing with uh, this, this piece up here. It comes quite close to the end, um, but doesn't touch it. And then I did allow the slicer to, if I'm not mistaken, I think draw like maybe two millimeters worth of um, supports so that it was easy to kind of knock it off. And I think I just grabbed the back of this with like a really big um, pair of pliers uh, and just rotated it kind of back and forth and it broke off. Uh, same thing for the other side as well, uh, but this support is a much, yeah, in fact, you can see the gap that I left here. So this is one solid piece uh, and then the slicer just builds supports uh, to fill this gap here and then it just, it, you know, it peels off real easily. Uh, the nylock nuts go down into these slots and in fact you can see it's it's uh, this part out here where they initially slide in is a bit oversized and then it steps uh, and then it's a press fit down here in the end so those guys don't fall out. Um, and again they're nylock nuts so that we don't have to over tighten this guy on that ROPS bar. Once it snugs up where it doesn't slide anymore um, we just leave the bolts there because that nylon insert on the nut those bolts don't move throughout the season they just stay in place. So I think that is everything to talk about on the design. Um, I've got another channel uh, as well that I go into a ton more detail on this particular project. Uh, it's uh, just a general channel that I do everything from tractor modifications, uh, dual sport riding, um, stuff around the yard or around the house, all kinds of stuff, uh, electronics projects. If you're interested in a deeper dive on this specific project, I do a three-part series on that channel. In fact, I'm publishing the third part, actually testing uh, this snowblower, um, you know, and the rotation of it uh, on that channel. So check that out. Uh, I'll link that down um, below. And if you're interested in one of these, let me know. Uh, as always, I'm gonna post the STL files for all of these parts on fpfdesigns.com, free of charge. You're welcome to download them print them out. Um, you can't print them out and sell them to somebody else. The license doesn't allow you to do that, but you can certainly print them out for your own use um, and make this whole this whole thing. I'll include a parts list for everything I used. All the hardware, the, uh, the gear motor I used, all that stuff will be linked on fpfdesigns.com as well as in the description of this video. Uh, but if you're interested in one of these kits, if you're watching this and you don't have a 3D printer, um, hit the contact form on fpfdesigns.com. I might be able to, to help you out. I'm considering um, selling these parts as a kit for folks that don't have a 3D printer since the kit from Land Pride is so much money. It's like $800 uh, to buy this kit from, uh, from Land Pride. Or not this kit, but to buy a kit that performs the same function. And in my opinion, doesn't even do a, as a nice a job and have uh, controls as nice as what I've built um, for, for this one. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, if you're not already a subscriber, I hope I earned your subscription. Um, even if you don't intend on building one of these, I hope that something in this design maybe gave you an idea for a design of your own that you're working on or something that you've got coming up. And I'll catch you next Friday.